Behind me is George Washington's grist mill that he made in about 1790 that was up in production. This is a reproduction, but it helped him make things like flour and cornmeal and all kinds of things he needed for his distillery so he could make alcohol and so he could feed people up at the estate. Inside here are the most amazing inventions. One of them, the hoverboard that uses circles. Also, the water mill, which helped power this whole place. Amazing mathematics inside. Let's check it out. What's really phenomenal about George Washington's grist mill is that he made it completely automated. Almost the entire thing could be run with very little manual labor. The grist mill is powered completely by water. Water that comes in to the grist mill is hit by this 16 foot water wheel moving counterclockwise, which in then in turn turns all these gears and these gears power every apparatus within the grist mill. Corn or wheat is pounded down by these milling stones inside these circular containers. It's then sorted into depending on how finely it's been ground. After the sorting process, all the flour or corn goes upstairs. Once the flour heads upstairs, it'll then be cooled and then it'll move downstairs again to be sorted and shipped into barrels. This illustration is of Oliver Evans' automated system. He's the designer of the system and George Washington purchased it from him in 1791. George Washington also signed it in as the third patent of the United States. As the flower hit the third floor, it went to an area called the Hopper Boy. The Hopper Boy is a place where flour is cooled. A long time ago, it, the flour used to be raked and that's what made it cool, but it was done by hand. With Oliver Evans' system, the flour pours in on the edge of the rake and the rake turns the, the flour in circles. And what the flour does is it travels along a path of concentric circles till it gets to the center. By the time it hits the center, it's pretty cool and it drops down to the next floor through a hole in the center. Then the flour is sorted using something called an Archimedes spiral, which is really cool. But let's get back to that rake. That is where the really awesome mathematics comes in. If the flower lands on the outside of the rake and travels all the way around every single circle, how far does that flower actually travel before it lands down the center hole for the finish of the cooling? That's a really challenging mathematical question. How on earth would you go about answering that? Well, you're going to have to make some estimation and you're going to have to do some figuring out by how many teeth there are, how big the rake is, and how long it is to go around every single one of those circles. As far as dimensions are concerned, the best I can guess is that the rake is about 14 feet all the way across and the length in between each tooth is about 3 inches. That information should give me enough to start to probably start calculating the length and distance around each one of the concentric circles going from the outside edge all the way around to the center part of the floor where the flower falls in. You may actually just have to pause the video and take a look at the rate closely or the circles to figure out this all important question. How far does the flower travel when it's trying to be cooled? This isn't an easy calculation, but then again, what would the general do?